What's up, my brothers and sisters? I hope you guys are having a blessed week today, guys. I'm gonna talk about something that I really believe the Lord has placed on my heart. And usually before I make these videos, I like to pray over them and just ask the Lord if this is exactly what he wants me to talk about. And I do believe this is something that he does want me to teach on. So if you guys came hungry, if you came ready to be fed with the word of God, then I say let's feast together, my brothers and sisters, because we're gonna go really in depth in Romans 6 today. And we're gonna talk about something that I really feel is gonna help a lot of you guys out because because a lot of times I get people who ask me, oh, Andrew, I'm bound to this. Andrew, I'm stuck in this sin. Andrew, I can't get out of doing this. And guys, as believers, we need to understand what Christ has set us free from, that when he was nailed to that cross, that the power of sin and death, now because we believe in him, has no hold over us. And it's a constant battle each and every single day between your flesh and your spirit. And your flesh is always gonna want the desires of this world because your flesh isn't coming with you. If you think about it, guys, when we pass away, our flesh is not coming with us. The only thing that's gonna live forever is our spirit. So our flesh does not care about us. It's not coming with us. I remember when I first came to Christ in the beginning of 2020, I was bound to just so many different things, so many different addictions that I was doing back when I was in the world. And it wasn't until I got to that place of surrendering, understanding that God is greater than the sin I was dealing with. And I just wanna let you know today that whatever you're struggling with, whatever the sin you keep falling into, God is greater than that and he is able to set you free. Romans chapter six, verse one. What shall we say to all this? Should we continue in sin and practice sin as a habit so that God's gift of grace may increase and overflow? Certainly not. How can we, the very ones who died to sin, continue to live in it any longer? So Paul is saying that how can we, believers who have died to sin, how can we continue to keep on doing the same things that we're doing? Guys, either we are dead to sin or we are dead in our sin. But when we are born again believers, when we are truly put our faith in Jesus Christ and we get filled with the Holy Spirit, we have now died to the power of sin. Sin no longer has a hold over us because you are a slave to whatever you obey. If you obey sin, you are a slave to sin. If you obey Jesus, you are a slave to Jesus Christ. Verse six, we know that our old self, our human nature without the Holy Spirit was nailed to the cross with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. So right now what Paul is saying is that our old self, our self before we were born again without the Holy Spirit, it has been now crucified to the cross. And now because we believe in Jesus Christ, because now we have our faith in Jesus, those desires no longer have a hold of us because Jesus has set us free from the bondage and the slavery of sin. Think about it, before you were saved, you were just following the worldly desires, you were just following the lust of the flesh. But when you heard the message of salvation, when you put your faith in Jesus Christ and received the gift of the Holy Spirit, you now became a new creation. If anyone is in Christ, therefore he is a new creation, out with the old and in with the new. So Paul is saying that we have actually been set free from the bondage of sin. And then it says, verse seven, for the person who has died with Christ has been freed from the power of sin. Back then, before Christ had came into the world, they were under the law which they were unable to keep. And I believe the law revealed two things. It revealed first off the holiness of God. Because if you look, and you guys should read the Old Testament if you haven't, if you look at the law, there were requirements and regulations that God had given, which mankind could not keep. The law actually revealed how sinful we were. And number two, I believe the law revealed the holiness of God. It showed us that he's so holy that on our own strength, we cannot keep his standard on our own strength. We cannot be made righteous with him. We can't. That's why it says that he who knew no sin became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. Our righteousness is not our own righteousness. The Bible says that our righteousness is like filthy rags. But because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, now we become the righteousness of God. As born again believers, we cannot use God's grace as a license to sin. We cannot just say, oh, God has grace so I can just go do whatever I want. Because if you think about it, right? Jesus refers to us as his sheep and he is the shepherd. When you think of a sheep, right? It, if it falls into mud. If a sheep is following the shepherd and it falls into mud, a sheep doesn't live in mud. A sheep lives following his shepherd. So the sheep is gonna be looking for his shepherd to get him out of the mud he has fallen into. Versus a pig, a pig lives in mud. As believers, we're gonna make mistakes 
there's going to be times where we may fall into sin, but we are sheep. We're not pigs. We don't live in mud. We don't live in sin. We can fall into sin, but we're going to look to Jesus, come to him in repentance for him to pull us out of what we fell into. Verse 11, even so consider yourselves to be dead to sin in your relationship to a broken, but alive to God in unbroken fellowship with him in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its lust and passions. Guys, we do not even belong to ourselves. God purchased us with the precious blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Think about how precious that blood is. More precious than rubies, gems, money. Like we were bought with the precious blood of the almighty God. Therefore, now we don't even belong to ourselves. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And if you think about it, we have the spirit of the almighty God. The spirit of the almighty God do, came and dwelt inside of us. And now we are no longer our own. Now we belong to Christ and we need to live our lives as a living sacrifice. Nothing is a sacrifice, guys, for the one who gave us life. Our body, we should be living to please him. Do not go off on offering members of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but offer yourselves to God in a decisive act as those alive raised from the dead to a new life. And your members, all of your abilities, sanctified, set apart as instruments of righteousness, yielded to God. We have been set apart. We are not of the world. We live in this world, but we are not of the world. We have been sanctified and set apart for God and for his purpose. Verse 14, for sin will no longer be a master over you since you are not under the law as slaves, but under unmerited grace as recipients of God's favor and mercy. Verse 17, but thank God that you were slaves of sin. You became obedient with all your heart to the standard of teaching in which you were instructed and with and to which you were committed. And having been set free, you have become the slaves of righteousness, of conforming to God's will and purpose. Verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God, that is his remarkable overwhelming gift of grace to believers is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. When we look at verse 23, it says the wages of sin is death. When you look at the word wages, for example, right? If you worked at Chick-fil-A, and you made $15 an hour, your hourly wage is $15. So you earn $15 per hour for the work that you did. So the Bible says that what we have earned because of our sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. We cannot just say that because we are saved by grace through faith that we can go on and live however we want because as believers, we are actually now, as it says in Romans chapter six, the heading, we are now dead to sin. That's why Jesus says that you shall know them by the fruit because if you are truly a born again believer, you are gonna be dead to your sin and alive in Christ. You're not gonna keep wanting to do the same things that you're doing because now that we've been saved by a gift that we could never earn, now that we've been saved by God's undeserved grace, our mindset now should be, how can I live for God? How can I please God? How can I be more of a disciple of Christ to people? How can I be more of a light of Christ everywhere that I go? And if you right now are dealing with a sin, if you are dealing with something that has kept you in bondage, I just wanna let you know that Jesus Christ has set us free from the slavery of sin. Whether it's sexual sin, whether it's lying, jealousy, cheating, whatever you are dealing with that you keep falling into, surrender that to God because he cares for you. He wants to free you from the sin that you are in. Galatians 5, 19. Now the practices of the sinful nature are clearly evident. They are sexual morality, impurity, sensuality, total irresponsibility, lack of self-control, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions that promote heresies, envy, drunkenness, riotous behavior, and other things like these. I warn you beforehand, just as I did previously, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, the result of His presence within us, is love, unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And I want to stop. The Bible is saying that the fruits, one of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. So because you have the Holy Spirit, if you are a born again believer, you actually have self-control that is within you. And it says that the practices of the sinful nature, things such as sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, 
things like that. If you practice such things, if you make a practice of it, that you will not inherit the kingdom of God. You know, Jesus says in Matthew 15, 8, many people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. We must live a life of repentance. The Bible says that faith without works is dead, or the NLT version says that faith without actions is actually dead. Now, we're not saved by our works. We are not saved by works. We are saved by grace through faith, but our actions prove that we truly have faith. For example, if you said that, oh, you believed you could become a doctor, but you never went to medical school, you never studied, you never took school seriously, I would look at you and be like, do you truly believe you could become a doctor because your actions are not showing it? The same way with faith, if we say we have faith in Jesus Christ, then we have to live lives that are of repentance. We look at what John the Baptist was preaching when he was preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. It says that John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. That is requiring a change of one old way of thinking, turning away from sin and seeking God in his righteousness. So if you are living in the water, if you are living in sin, have you truly repented of your sins? Because when you repent, it is not just saying, oh God, I'm sorry and going back to what you're doing, but repentance is confessing your sins to the Lord and actually turning away from sin, saying, oh, okay, God, I've been doing it this way and now I want to make it 360, turn away from what I've been doing and now I want to follow you and live after you and turn away and I don't want to have this sin. As believers, we need to live changed lives and if you are bound to something, a couple of things that I did that helped me out was I fasted. I sought after the Lord. And also too, if you're bound, especially with lust, lust is something that is very, very huge in this generation. If you're struggling with lust, I would ask you, what are you looking at? What are you viewing? What are you spending your time doing? We're in a war each and every single day, guys. We need to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And there's a war going on right now for your soul. And if you are watching, 10 hours of Netflix. If you are spending your time doing things that are not of God, then it's going to be a lot harder to fight the flesh. That's why Romans says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We have to read our word daily. We have to get into the word. We have to get into prayer, seeking the face of the Father. We're not going to fall into sin as easily. We're going to be more likely to be able to turn away from sin because we're going to be seeking after him and we're going to be focused on the call that he has placed over our life. So I hope this video helped you guys out. I hope this video brought some insight to you and really made you realize that if you are in chains, if you are in bondage, that you can be set free in Jesus' name. To whoever's watching this who's in chains, that I command right now that every chain be broken off of you in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of lust, whatever you are dealing with, I command it right now to fall and be broken off in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray. Also guys, if you have any prayer requests, as always, please leave them down below. I'm going to do my best to try to start uploading more. I know I've been uploading. I haven't been uploading as much, but I'm going to try my best to upload as more. Also, if you haven't followed me on Instagram, make sure to do that. My Instagram is in the description. That's all for this video, guys. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. You guys are like family to me. And guys, let's walk this thing out. Let's walk right with God. Let's live righteously. Let's live set apart so that people can see the light of Christ in us so that we can truly be representatives of God and his kingdom, guys, because we are citizens of heaven. This is not our home, guys. I love you guys and stay blessed, guys. Have a good one.